wanting to give you guys an update on what I've been working on and uh, what's new with me, what's happening, answer some of your questions, and just go from there. So, um, I partnered with Carhartt a while back, did a couple videos. Hope you guys have been able to check those out. I made the uh, rustic piano bar and, or sorry, a speakeasy style piano bar and a rustic timber framed mirror. And uh, those are up on the Carhartt YouTube channel. And um, if you want to check those out, youtube.com slash Carhartt, you can check those out. Um, as far as what's new with me, uh, I've been spending a lot of time working on some videos for you guys. I'll have a new video up on the channel for you guys on Friday, day after tomorrow. So be sure to check out that. It's a... Uh, it's another light fixture. It's a little bit different than the last video I did where I made the um, gas pipe steampunk kind of uh, light fixture, but this one's a little more modern. Still pretty cool, simple build. I think you guys are going to enjoy it. And uh, otherwise, I've been working on a lot of stuff around the shop, streamlining things, getting it organized figuring out where tools are going to live, that kind of thing. And <clears throat> I bit the bullet, bought a dust collection system, which uh, so far I've been extremely happy with. And so I've been working on kind of plumbing that up. And I can take the computer here and show you a little bit. Um, I have some four inch piping run all the way across the ceiling with some uh, down pipes that connect to each tool and at each tool uh, so my chop saw is connected at each tool is a blast gate the blast gates uh, open and close depending on if you need the tool at the time and uh, so I kick that on use my tool sucks up all the dust bags it for me keeps the shop way cleaner than it did I just got that set up, so uh, super happy with that thus far. And uh, doing a lot of stuff around the backyard and kind of some landscaping. Uh, my next project is actually gonna be remodeling our uh, entryway, our foyer, um, which will not be too difficult, but I'm gonna do some different design style than some of the other stuff that I've done so far. So looking forward to sharing <clears throat> that with you guys. I'm going to be doing some uh, board and batten kind of around the bottom, uh, like a two-tone color scheme with rustic accents. And uh, part of the light fixture, the light fixture that I'm building this week for the video is up in there. So you guys will be able to check that out on Friday and get get a good look at kind of what I'm going for. Uh, I'm just going to answer Josh's question here quickly. What if I accept a job as a rookie and my customer doesn't like what I build for him? Um, here's the thing. If you are up front with your customer on, uh, you know, on the front end, if you're not a contractor, for example, you can't say that you're a contractor. You can say you're a handyman. You can't say you're a contractor because contractor uh, requires a license, which you likely don't have if you're a rookie. And then beyond that, if you're building something like a, a table or chairs or something like that, your customer should kind of know what you're capable of or you should let them know, you know, perhaps you know, you're building something you've never built before. I have experience building X, Y, and Z, but I've never done this particular build before, but I'm confident that I can do it for you. But if they don't like it, I mean, one, it's either on them for hiring you in the first place, or two, you don't charge them. And that's up to you, really. Um... TJ says, I have my YouTube channel. Come check it out. Don't forget to subscribe. Blah, 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 blah. Um, so anyway, Josh, I, I find it highly weird that somebody would hire you not knowing what your talent is or 
hiring you out of the blue to build something you're not comfortable building. How do you determine how many gallons of paint you need to paint a room? That's really a solid question and probably better suited for somebody who paints for a living. There's probably a formula that they figure out. But on average, let's say you're going to do two coats per room and you're going over kind of a neutral base or just a primer. Uh, I usually err on the side of if the room is 20 by 20 or less, maybe even smaller than that, slightly smaller than that, you could probably get away with two gallons. Anything bigger than that, if you're doing extended hallways, covering um, you know, darker colors, you need multiple coats, I would suggest you prime it first so that you're not wasting that money on paint. Primer is a lot cheaper than paint. So put multiple coats of primer over it if you're covering a dark color, then paint it. Um, I would say that would be uh, the best thing. But as far as figuring it out, exactly how much paint you need, I don't really know. It's a good question. Um, what else have I been working on? Let's see. I. Uh, I did a video for my friends over at Tecton. I might share that or a snippet of it uh, with you guys. It's not necessarily made for a YouTube channel. Um, it's something I've done for them so that they can use internally. But um, very happy with um, getting to work with those guys, getting to work with Carhartt. Um, I've been really fortunate that some of these People have, have found my channel and seem to like my stuff and want to partner with me in various capacities to, to either create content, create videos, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Anderson says, I'm from Brazil, but I follow your channel, which is very good. Obrigado. Thank you, Anderson. I appreciate that. Um, I've been to Brazil. It's been a few years. 2008 was the last time I was in Brazil. But I uh, loved it down there. It was a great time. Ray says, one can of paint will cover up to 400 square feet. So, there you go. 20 by 20 is 400 square feet. So, that's kind of what I said, but that's one gallon. But I said two coats. So, 20 by 20. Uh... Let's see what else is happening. Um, if you guys have any other questions, be sure to leave those in the comments below or sidebar or wherever it shows up in your chat window. It's on the side for me, but it might be on the bottom for you. Oh, that is two coats. Okay, well, one can of paint for a 20 by 20 room. There you go. Excuse me. So, uh, another project that I've been working on that I uh, haven't made a video out of, but I have been shooting a lot of pictures of, is I've created a uh, bat display case. It's pretty much just a shadow box with a door on it, hinge door with the glass face. And I've been working on that for the last several days. A friend of mine has a really large bat collection and a lot of game used world uh world series bats um, all sorts of high profile games high profile players and he's got all the history he's a collector so he asked me to put together a display case for his bats and so that's what i've been doing kind of trying to figure it out he mentioned to me that in some of the forums and things that he follows they charge about like 900 to a thousand dollars for a display case bat or a display case for bats and so he asked me if we could do it for cheaper and of course you can always do it cheaper so um, that's what we did and really happy with it and actually uh, delivered it this afternoon so it's all finished up but I may actually make a, a video about how to do 
that, how to build it. You can use it for jerseys, maybe like kids sports jerseys, or, you know, if you follow a specific sports team or favorite player or whatever, really anything. You could use it as a trophy case, whatever. It's a wall mount uh, shadow box, really. So it's up in the air as far as how you use it. But it came out really good. I'm really happy with it. And uh, so I think I might make a video about that down the, down the road. And as a project video, I probably should have filmed this one, but I was trying to get it done quickly. So I just kind of, you know, went for it and tr tried to just kind of make it go as fast as I could. So one thing I will tell you about doing these live shows, other than the technical difficulties and, uh, you know, the headaches as far as YouTube streaming, I might try a different, more simple approach next time, as they call it. But we'll see. <coughs> trying to up the production value of these things, but every time I try and do something, it get be becomes more difficult. But beyond that, I have to listen to headphones because you get feedback if you don't. And that's what happened before it kicked me off. Well, now I've got it in my ears, exactly what I'm saying to you, but at a fraction of a delay. So... I'm hearing myself in an echo that kind of jams my speech up, so I feel like I'm stuttering. So if I'm stuttering, I apologize. It's because I'm hearing myself at the same time that I that you guys are hearing it, which is on a slight delay. So it's crazy, frustrating. One second, I forgot that I wasn't plugged in here. My battery's running low on my computer. So I'm just gonna pull down my, this is a cool little thing I got. It's a little retractable uh, extension cord that I mounted up on the ceiling from the shop. Makes it a lot easier to just pull down and plug in whenever you need, whenever you need a little extra power for something. All right, Josh has another question. Here we go. I'm making a door, and I have the idea of the door in my mind. It's great, and uh, don't like it. Do I just try again? You're you're talking about your customer, I'm guessing, and you have an idea for a door that you think would be great. Just make the door however you want. If it's going in their house, you got to do what they want. And, uh, you know, if you guys can't come eye to eye, don't build something and then expect them to pay for it when they told you up front that they don't like it. That's silly. So, um, you know, Build what you want for your place or for your house or your apartment or whatever you got. But when it comes to client work, they're hiring you to, to do a specific job. So you got to do what they want. Otherwise, you know, you're not going to get paid and it's going to be a waste of your time. Uh, subscribe to my channel. How long with Dambo, Annoying Orange TV, and YouTube? Uh... I worked, okay, going backwards, I guess. I worked in TV from 2007 until 2011-ish, 12 maybe. But during that time, during the last few years of television work, I was also working on YouTube because YouTube came around in 2000, was it seven or nine? Seven. It came around in seven. I started making videos with friends and things, doing stuff around 2008. And then Annoying Orange started in 2009. And as Dane started to scale with Annoying Orange, I became more and more involved. And then eventually I left TV, went over to work for Annoying Orange full time. And I've been doing that pretty consistently since 2011, I think. So five years on that, about five years in TV before that. And I've been doing this particular brand, the Mr. Fix-It stuff, which I really enjoy for really only for the last couple years. Um, I just didn't do videos. I was still doing a lot of this type of work. I just wasn't making videos. Um, have you ever had someone reject your work? Uh, not really. I don't think I've ever had anybody reject my work because they knew what I was going to do beforehand. 
so the stuff that I do, you know, I usually give the client, whoever I'm working for, for example, my friend's baseball bat case. He, he actually came over and wanted to see how I did it, get his hands dirty and actually uh, help me build it because he's not that familiar with doing this type of work. So obviously he was pretty happy because we were working together on it the entire way. Um, when I do other stuff for other clients, um, you know, it's commission based. Either one, they've seen something that I've built before and want me to make it again, so they already know what they're getting. Or two, um, I guess they just trust my instincts as far as what I'm going to make. But I always design what I'm going to do and give them a kind of a overview, illustration, whatever I can do, 3D model if I have the time. I give them that to sign off on ahead of time. And as far as videos go, I usually, when I'm working with a client or somebody, I'll make the video, send it to them, let them, you know, maybe give me one or two rounds of notes, depending. If we don't see eye to eye after that, it's not a great fit as far as a relationship because we have different ideas in mind. So it's important to work with the right people too. Um, <clears throat> do you draw out your ideas for things or do you just come up with them and build them? I'm 50-50. Sometimes I draw them out. Sometimes I just step into the shop and I'm like, I'm going to just kind of spitball and make whatever I feel like. Um, an example of something like that is this. I'll show you. One second. Try not to choke myself. So when I'm just kind of tinkering in the shop and I'm building stuff for no particular reason, just other than the fact that I want to, I usually just use scrap material. And that's what this is. And it probably doesn't look like much at the moment, but I did a a Christmas gift for a few of mine with wine barrel uh, stave, which is like the pieces of wood that make up the wine barrel uh, all around in a circle. It's all made of individual pieces. Well, I had cut off some stuff. These are the ends that were scrap wood. And so it's made out of a wine barrel, but I just wanted to tinker with it and see what I could do with it. So I was like, what I made here is just a, uh, this is actually an iPod dock or an iPhone dock. It's got a hole in it down here you put your phone charger in it sits in it like that you know it's just tinkering it's got a little channel here where it's unfinished but it's got a little channel in here where you wrap your phone cord around and it sits it's uh dowel joined down in the bottom so stuff like that like when i just feel like tinkering i'll just jump into the shop won't draw anything out and i'll just make stuff um usually if i'm going to be making a project video I usually give it a little bit more forethought in design only because I don't want to have to do a bunch of stuff, shoot it, go back, realize I screwed it up and then look like an idiot in my videos. But uh, I usually put a little bit more forethought into stuff that I'm actually going to film or for stuff like Josh is asking for if I'm building something for somebody else. Um, if it's just for me, I usually kind of, spitball it. If it's for someone else, I'll take the time to design it out. What kind of saw is best if you want to make small projects like a birdhouse? Circular saw, chop saw, jigsaw. Um, a circular saw, well, the, for one, it depends on the type of wood. Uh, <clears throat> if it's a, a birdhouse, but it's made out of like Michael's brand type woods like balsa woods or very thin wood you don't really need anything as big as any of those saws you could get away with uh, a cutoff tool like an oscillating tool or something that has different interchangeable heads that you could cut if it's very thin simple wood if it's thicker wood you're dealing with i would recommend um for somebody who doesn't have a lot of experience with the saw a, a very small chop saw would would work fine. Circular saws, they do the same thing, but circular saw, you know, 
you got to use by hand. And if you're not familiar with really using circular saws a lot, um, you know, they can be a little bit more dangerous. Chop saws are fixed. Obviously, if you fix it to a fixed base table or workbench, chop it down, you cut things to length. It's really all you need. Um, but as far as making, um, you know, chop saws and circular saws are good for, um, you know, cross cuts, not really good for rip cuts. So what I mean by that is, uh, an example of a cross cut. So say the grain of this pencil runs, you know, along the length of it. If you cut it in half this way, that's an example of a cross cut. If you cut it in half lengthwise, that's an example of a rip cut. So a table saw, for example, would be what you would want to use to do rip cuts because you could just feed it through cut it all the way down the line. But if you're just, you know, measuring and cutting things to length, that's cross cut slaw, slaw, uh, saw. So uh, something like a, a chop saw, like I have small bench top one would be fine. You know, if you're working with big materials like I have, you're probably looking at a 12 inch sliding saw or just a 12 inch uh, fixed fix saw, which is what that one over there is. How can I get my husband to organize his tool better so they aren't sitting all around the house? That's a good question. And it just comes down to the person whose tools they are. For me, I spend a lot of money on my tools. And I also value my time when it comes to doing things. For one, because I'm making videos, so, uh, but I, I just, I'm kind of an anal person when it comes to knowing where things are when I need to use them. So what I like to do is I like to hang them up, you know, make specific spots where they go, where you can see them clearly. They're out in plain sight. So one, you know where they are when you need them. Two, you know where they are or you know they should be there when they're not, which means you left it somewhere, you put it somewhere it shouldn't be, it's not there right now, you know. You could give it the old uh, dead body outline with the chalk if you want, you know, to show the shape of the tool so you know exactly what goes where. But uh, one of the things, another one of the things that I've been doing, as I mentioned, doing a lot of shop organization stuff is I got a label maker. I'm actually labeling where my screws go, what sizes they are, all that type of stuff. Because I just like things organized. I like things clean. I like to be able to know where stuff is when I need it and, and just get in, use it, put it back. Obviously, space is the premium. You know, you have to have space to put your tools in order for them to be out of the way. And that could be the tricky spot if you're in, you know, a smaller house or an apartment and you don't have a, a, obviously this, my garage is a dedicated shop. I don't park my car in here. I don't do anything in here that isn't related to building, woodworking, repair, whatever. Um, and one thing I've done is I've, I've built out a closet over here and put internal shelves inside of that to separate my work zone from the storage zone. So all that stuff over there, Christmas get, or uh, Christmas ornaments and things like that, or holiday decor, stuff I don't need all the time, all in the storage area. I don't want that in my way. I don't want to trip on it. I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to have to move it all the time. So find a way to separate church and state a little bit, you know, like get rid of the stuff you don't need, put it away from where your tools, so you're not crossing paths all the time. Uh, what I find is, you know, if you can have the space, dedicate a space for, you know, your tools and dedicate your space for storage. So to answer your question, 
how can I get my husband to organize this tool better? Uh, give him a little financial leeway to build himself a little shop or a shed or some kind of a garage. But uh, what's more important? You know, it comes down to do you want him to spend his money on building stuff or do you want him to spend it on other stuff? If you were to expand your business to make more money, what would be your next expansion? Um, that's actually a really good question. One of the things that I would really like to do if uh, things go well with the brand and I can continue making content for you guys and stuff, uh, I would like to really help or that would really help me to bring in somebody to help me edit some of the videos. Um, that's probably where I would like to go next just because it takes a lot of time to make the videos and then depending on the complexity of the build or the complexity of the video that I'm doing or the animations that I like to try and implement into it that can sometimes double the time triple the time depending on how long or how involved each project is so a natural expansion for me would be somebody that could come in and help me edit you know uh, when I need it so that it could free up those hours for me to work on the next project because it's all about kind of looking down the line and making sure that I can put out consistent uh, regular content for you guys because obviously you know YouTube is a medium that expects consistency um, one of the things that you know if I were to be hard on myself as far as what I do is it's hard to be consistent. You know, it's hard to put out new content every week. It's hard to put out new videos every week. But I think I would expand in that way. Um, those, it would also free up more hours for me to have, you know, less uh, editing hours, more free hours for me to just kind of experiment in the shop, build new things, uh, take more commission work, build new projects that I could then sell, new furniture, new whatever. Um, that would free up a lot of time and, you know, there's, I have a pretty outlined strategy as far as where I'd like to go. Obviously, uh, the biggest part of that is you guys just interacting, watching my videos, letting me know that, you know, I'm on the right track. If you guys are enjoying what I'm doing and, uh, you want to support me even further beyond that. Um, I have the Patreon page that you can contribute to. It's just, it, it comes down for me to making content. And however I can free up my time and my hours, that's what I want to do. Because then I can focus that energy on making more and more content. And, and that's what's important for me and for the Mr. Fix-It brand moving forward. <clears throat> Excuse me. All great questions, though, so far. So thank you guys very much for uh, sticking around. Thank you guys for uh, pushing through the technical difficulties at the beginning. It seems, seems like every week that I try to do these things, there's some kind of technical difficulty. But appreciate you guys sticking around and, uh, you know, asking questions, being engaged. And... Uh, yeah, I really enjoy making the content for you guys, obviously. Otherwise, I wouldn't do it. And, um, you know, I hope you guys are enjoying it as well. There's a lot of stuff out there. There's a lot of great YouTube channels. There's a lot of great people that uh, do, you know, really great work. So the fact that you guys keep coming back to my channel, you know, is very satisfying. And I want to make bigger, better uh, content, bigger, better projects that I can present to you guys in new and engaging ways. I think one of the things I'm fortunate enough to have had is a little bit of the TV and the animation background. So I can add little flourishes here and there, uh, which I really enjoy doing. Some of the animations, some of the 3D models, some of the stuff. A lot of that stuff is just things I enjoy doing and figuring it out along the way. Um, I don't have any formal training 
in any of that stuff. And much like the type of content that I do in that space uh, is how I learned. You know, I watched a lot of tutorials. I watched people walking through how to animate, how to design, how to do all that type of stuff. And then since then, I've just kind of put my own spin on it and I, I make things that I uh, style, you know, my style. Um, do you have any large projects planned for this year? I do have several larger projects planned for this year, um, both on the house and outside of the house. Um, as far as my own house goes, there's so much work to do that I could keep busy for many years, not just this year. But one of the bigger projects that I'm going to do relatively soon, like I mentioned earlier, is going to be remodeling the foyer. It's not a huge, huge project, I would say, but it's, it's involved. Um, you know, anytime you remodel a room, it's always a bigger project than you think it's going to be. And uh, fortunately for this one, I'm not taking out any walls. I'm not changing any plumbing. I'm not changing any electrical. Well, a little bit of electrical, but not much. Um, besides that, there are a few bigger um, build projects that I'm doing. I don't really want to give away the next one that I'm doing for Carhartt, only because, um, I don't know, I want, to, I want to keep that one for myself for now and then just show it to you guys when it's done. But uh, what are my other builds? I think I got some things on the list here. Oh! I know a cool one that I'm kind of excited to do that I haven't, I've never done before. Um, is it a huge project? Maybe not, but the, so I remodeled, or sorry, I took that old upright piano, did the speakeasy uh, piano bar for Carhartt. Well, I strip all the internals out of the piano in order to do that, and I saved them. I didn't throw them away. And I was kind of thinking, like, what would be a cool thing to do with those internals that I've never done before? What, like, what types of things am I interested in doing that's different than what I've done in the past? And one of the things I was thinking of was um, a clock. I've never made a clock. I don't know anything about clock making. N never even tried. So I thought, well, what if I could take some of these piano parts and make a clock? And so I have an idea now of how I'm going to do that. I obviously haven't started, and is it going to work necessarily? I'm not sure, because like I said, I have no experience building clocks. But I have a design, and if it's anything like what I think it's going to look like, I think it'll be pretty sweet. So that is not an immediate project. I'll probably get to it sometime later in the year. It'll probably take me a bit of time to do that, to figure it out and stuff, but I will likely record that as a video. And so I'll share that with you guys when that's done. A lot of the other things, as far as the brand goes, is, is building out, one, my content library. More videos, more consistent, more frequent videos. Um, and, you know, keeping that quality too, or improving it if I can. You know, every every video is an opportunity to do something better or bigger than the last video. So trying to keep that in mind, you know, always improving something about each video, whether it's my woodworking skills, uh, the editing skills, sound design, motion graphics, titles, whatever. You can't improve all of them all at one time. So each one has to just kind of step up in one particular way. Um, but in addition to just the content, another big thing that I would like to do for the brand is build out my uh, website a little bit. Uh, I have no experience building websites. It's one of the things that frustrates me to no end because 
I don't know what I'm doing. And unlike most things, I really enjoy figuring things out for some time, for some reason, website building frustrates the heck out of me. Um, but I really want to build out my website as a bit more of a destination, a lot more blog posts, a lot more uh, plans and things that you guys can download, um, digital versions of my projects, all that kind of stuff so that you can follow along and or build what I'm building and I can make blueprints and things for you guys. Uh, that's a big thing that I'm trying to focus on. And uh, yeah, getting some of these other brands involved and, and doing uh, some bigger shows, uh, I think is is what I'd like to do. I'd love to get some people in here that can help me shoot things, edit things, all that stuff. Right now it's a one-man operation, so you can only do so much. There's only so many hours in the day, but, you know, we'll see what happens. You know, I'm just going to keep making content. Have you ever done any concrete staining? If so, what are some tips? No, I've never done any concrete staining. I actually, I considered it for the concrete sink that I did a while back. Um, but at the end of the day, I just kind of liked the raw concrete look. But I did do a little bit of research, but I've never done it. So, you know, it's, it's an acid stain that they use as far as uh, doing stuff like sink bases, countertops, that type of stuff. Um, but there's plenty of great tutorials out there. I'm trying to think of the name of the channel that I watched a fair number of videos about uh, staining. I can't think of it off the top of my head, but uh, just do a quick search on YouTube. There's so many good uh, videos out there of people doing concrete staining and stuff. I don't think you'll have any problem finding it. I don't have any tips for you though, because I've never done it myself, but I would like to try it. Have you ever thought about building things and selling them on Etsy or something like that? And are the things you make for sale? <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. Uh, yes, I've certainly um, thought about building things and selling them on Etsy. Uh, and that is part of my strategy moving, moving forward. That is also a little bit difficult for me only because, um, like I said, I got to spend so much time editing videos and things that I can't always find the hours to just jump in the shop and make little uh, things that are easily reproducible in a short amount of time because, you know, if I get, uh, you know, a bunch of orders of something, um, obviously I don't have the ability to mass produce. So each thing that I do is kind of one of a kind. So, and I know that Etsy allows you to do, uh, you know, upon order stuff, but that's one of the things I am planning to do is to build out a little bit of an Etsy store where you can, uh, either buy things that I have made already or, um, special order things. I know now that I've done the, uh, bat case, for example, the shadow box case, I am going to make those available as a special order item. Uh, you know, if you want one, I'll make them, uh, you know, probably take me a couple weeks before I can ship them out, but I am going to make those available. There's several other ideas that I have. Um, uh, and for sure, I'm hoping to launch. I do already have an Etsy store. I'll put the link to it, but there's not much on it right now, but I am planning to build that out. How much do you know about upholstery? Uh, I don't know a whole lot about upholstery. I've I've messed around with uh, you know a little bit of things on small scale, but I've never tried to like you know reupholster a couch or or anything like that. Um, I don't do a lot of sewing, nor do I know how to do much sewing, so not very helpful in that regard, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I've done small little things like, uh, I did a, a watch box a while ago that had like a tufted leather fabric thing. 
Um, I have some plans to do some uh, Western style uh, display cases for um, some friends of my girlfriend that have is part of the equestrian community that they want with, that has some tooled leather involved in it, but I'm not actually going to do the, the tooled leather work. I'm just going to utilize what's already made. So um, I don't know too much about upholstery. I've never really played with it and not really something that I am passionate about. I, I like certain elements of it, but I'm more interested in, in the, the woodworking side of it than I am about the upholstery side of it. Uh, let's see, how far in are we? It says here about 40 minutes from the second time that I launched it, but uh, what else am I going? Uh, another video that's going to be coming up on the channel shortly, uh, it's in progress right now, is uh, I'm going to be doing some more homeschooled episodes, which are the series where I just talk about basic, less about project builds and more about just learning how to fix and do stuff around your house on your own uh, rather than hiring people. Um, I've got a few more electrical um, how-to videos coming in that regard. And also I'm working on a, a video right now, which is uh, gutters, installing gutters which is something I'm doing because of the, uh, the rain that we're getting here in Southern California. So that will be likely coming in the next few weeks, hopefully. And then I've got a, a calendar of content that I'm working on that I, you know, constantly am plugging in new content, um, ideas and things that I kind of building out into a calendar so that I can, look ahead a few weeks and think, you know, here's the video that I want to do. This is the date that it's going to go up. And then I kind of backdate uh, how long it's going to take me to build the project and kind of focus in on my structure so that I can hit those benchmarks as far as creating a consistent content schedule. So uh, that is a big thing that I've been working on. Just trying to come up with new and creative ideas, stuff that you guys will enjoy watching, short, shareable stuff that uh, you know can help build uh, subscribership in the audience and, and keep our little community we have going here uh, expanding. You know, and eventually I'd like to, you know, start showcasing some other people's, you know, projects and stuff as well. Um, you know, showcasing some other people out there like me that maybe, you know, don't have the video capabilities or the resources that that I do. Um, showcasing some of their stuff and telling their stories as well. So that's probably down the line, you know, probably quite a ways down the line, only because, like I said, single one-man operation right now and... Uh, I think that would require a little bit more of a team. Um, uh, let's see. I'm not an economist, Josh, so I don't know how to improve economy. Oh, so, let's see. Um, <clears throat> in other news, as far as the shop goes... Um, I have a, uh, dovetail jig that I got a, quite a while ago that I had never used before. And I was able to use that on the, uh, the bat display case that I just built and getting to use that was really cool. It was the first time that I've, uh, cut dovetails on a, on a jig like that. And I think, you know, getting a little familiarity with that and starting to incorporate a lot more of that type of stuff into some of my projects is something I'm really looking forward to. I really uh, enjoy adding some of those little details to some of the projects and, um, you know, 
just kind of stepping up my my skill set every time and and adding new and exciting things uh let's see other things that are coming on the channel um like i said building out the website building out the etsy side of things and uh Consistency and schedule, I guess, is my New Year's re resolution as far as the brand goes. Um, but like I said, all depends on you guys and, uh, you know, just your ability to keep watching. That's really what I need is you guys to keep interacting and to keep watching. So keep telling me what you want to see and I'll do my best to make it happen. Uh, phone blowing up. All right, so with that said, I think I'm about to wrap things up for the night. Again, I really appreciate you guys coming, stopping by, saying hello, leaving a comment, question, that kind of stuff. Uh, you guys are the reason why I make this stuff, and I'm trying to make this live show as a way that we can connect face to face. And, uh, you know, you guys can engage with me um, in a different format other than sending me emails and tweets and things. Um, I will continue to keep working on this live streaming technical stuff. See if I can work out a workflow that doesn't seem to have me figuring things out every 20 minutes. Uh, but... Uh, Maybe next time I'll try the YouTube live streaming Google Hangout on air thing version. Maybe that'll be less of a headache. Uh, but eventually I would like to big out, build out the live shows to maybe feature some of your guys' pre-recorded questions, or you can jump in live and ask your own questions, you know, face to face, essentially. Uh, Evanson PHX doing my concrete floors right now. Messy work. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by that. I'm guessing you're thinking you're saying that you're polishing them or you're pouring them slab, pouring a slab or something and then polishing them or staining them or whatever. Yeah, it's messy. Concrete is a pain and it's heavy. How many F-bombs would you give YouTube streaming? Honestly, YouTube streaming is one of the most difficult things that I do. Just trying to figure it out is such a pain. You got to have a third-party plugin just to... And I use, I'm use i trying to use this Wirecast thing, which is a streaming software that you have to download. You have to launch it. You have to log into your YouTube page. Then it has to encode it. Then it has to go live. Then if there's an issue, then the thing is a major F-bomb scale. But uh, appreciate you guys sticking it out and, uh, and hanging in there while I sort through the te technical difficulties. Anyway, grinding and polishing. Yeah, uh, grinding and polishing concrete can be a real pain um, and super dusty. You gotta keep spraying water on it to keep the dust down because it's just gonna be a nightmare. Um, a friend of mine actually is doing some uh, remodeling, is going through a similar thing, and he posted a picture the other day, and he's just in this cloud of dust. And uh, I was like, maybe you should just spray a little water on it, but it does look cooler for photos if you kick up a lot of dust. So anyways, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. Appreciate it. As always, if you need to reach me, hit me up on Twitter. Leave me a message on Facebook. If you have a question, you want some uh, feedback, want to share a project with me, whatever. I'm always available. Hit me up on Facebook. Hit me up on Twitter, Instagram. Links to all that stuff is in the description below. Um, as I mentioned previously, if you want to contribute to the Patreon campaign, 
feel free to do so. You don't have to, certainly. Um, but I appreciate any support you guys can give. And otherwise, I'll just continue making content for you guys and uh, keep interacting, keep hitting that like button, keep leaving me comments, and let me know that uh, I'm on the right track. But until next time, I appreciate it, and I will catch you guys later. Have a good night, and take care. Uh, today we are talking about electrical homeowning basics. Uh, I'm going to tell you basically everything that I know, or at least a semblance of what I know about uh, home electrical. Mm -hmm.